All right. Hey YouTube, it's White Rice. I'm here with Carlosto, JC, Slurgy, and Tobias, and Woolen Sleevelet. And this is a roundtable video, so we're going to be discussing uh, all the aspects of Spy and what everyone thinks about each weapon. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Carl Carlotto. I'm uh, from England, and I play in Prem as the Sneaky Backstabs Man. I'm a kid who lives in California who doesn't have a social life. My name's Slurgy. I run a popular YouTube channel teaching uh, spy tutorials, and uh, yeah. Uh, my name's Tobias Funke. I use the kunai a lot. That's me. I'm White Rice. Uh, I'm a competitive spy. He's been playing spy for a long time, and I have a passion for the class. Oh, hello, I'm Wooden. I just kind of play spy for the weirdos. That's kind of all we I do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so to get started, uh, what do you guys think about uh, all the watches? So we'll start out with like the Invis watch. What do you guys want the Invis watch or like it? I think it's great. Uh, all the watches have their own uses. Uh, I think the Invis watch is good for getting really far behind the enemy lines and really setting up uh, you know, big plays that you might not have the chance to set up with the Dead Ringer. It's quite good at just getting like that one pick that you really need to get, because it's pretty good if you want to be like a bit of a suicide spy and you really need like, like that med pick. You can get quite yeah. good positioning with it, can't you? I uh, I'm very akin to using uh, invis when I like to uh, time saps and go for ng kills most, because um, you can really get close to people and do really dangerous d cloaks, which can uh, often get you just the best kills. I uh use the Invis watch pretty much exclusively. Um, I'll very, very rarely go to one of the other two. Um, I think it's just, it's the most authentic form of spy that there is, um, almost regardless of what knifing. I just think it's uh, the most pure form of spy in the game. I think the Invis watch is really good if you have really good timing. Uh... Because it relies a lot on knowing the exact moment to decloak and uh, cloak, and it takes a lot of thinking that the DR sometimes doesn't necessarily take. It's kind of a different playstyle altogether. Mm. Same Definitely. as is very traditional uh, compared to the other two. A lot of people ask me about, like, oh, why should I use Invis in pubs because Dead Ring is better? But the thing about it is if you play, you know, Invis Watch in 32 man servers, your movement that you get from that is really going to transition over to Highlander, and you always want good movement. I agree with that. Like Invis, yeah. I think, is a very good teaching tool for spies. Um, regardless of what uh, what you think is the best, Invis is uh, by default, I think, the best teaching tool because it teaches you how to avoid damage, how to go the route less taken, and ammo pack locations, and yeah, very solid. Value. I agree. It teaches you a lot about the fundamentals of spying that the DR might not necessarily teach you. Uh, so yeah, in that aspect, I think the Invis Watch is really good. And, I don't know, in pubs, I, since I play exclusively pubs, uh, I find that the better the players are in the pub, usually I'll be going more towards the Invis Watch than the DR. Uh, so I don't know if that scales more with player skill or just my play style. No, I, I agree with that, because I, I don't do much competitive anymore. I mostly do pubs and, um... I play on a lot of 32-man servers, and uh, when they're really good opponents, using the Invis watches a lot, um, I don't know if reliable is the right word, but uh, it really gets them more paranoid if you really have good movement and know how to get around them and away from them. Um, you'll, I think you'll die less uh, than when you're using the Dead Ringer with good players on a server like that. I would say it's just easier to trick people with Invis Watch than the DR. The DR is, is more predictable. I mean, you can make more advanced plays with Invis Watch, just like mind games with people, making them think you're going in one direction and actually going somewhere completely differently. Yeah, definitely. I find myself just naturally being more predictable when I use the Dead Ringer because I don't have more. Uh, I have less mobility, so I don't have as many places to go as I would have with the Invis. All right, that's the Invis Watch. Uh... Um. That leads us to uh, the cloak and dagger. Um, Ooh. So uh, how do you guys take uh, the cloak and dagger? Cloak and dagger is probably the. <laughs> um, I believe um, uh, the German spy Zegon. He did a uh, 
He did a good uh, video I saw um, where he managed to utilize uh, Cloak and Dagger pretty effectively in pubs. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty nice uh, little mindset video that you can check out. He, do, he does uh, quite awesome in a bad water pub with it. Um, but just in general for the Cloak and Dagger, I think it is probably my least used watch because I like to, uh, I like to be quick. And the Cloak and Dagger is a really slow pace compared to the other two at least. Um, but where it excels, uh, at least for me in competitive, is um, I love using it uh, for just comms. Uh, it's really great for just sitting in a position and telling my team everything that's going on. Uh, and that's a, that's a, a kind of freedom that you don't really get with the other two watches. It's really good one on stuff like Swift Water and Steel, I think. Because you don't have like too many ammo packs on there, but they're really wide open. So it's pretty good for those. Like, I think it might be better for mobility on um, Steel than the Invis watch. Because either you have to give up like your Ambi or something and use the Letter Angers, or you can run like you know the cloak and dagger on steel and, and get positioning quite nicely. I think it's quite good for uh, doing time plays with like, the engine and stuff. And might be better than the invis in a couple of maps. Yeah, I think you got to be really patient with the cloak and dagger. It's pretty hit and miss with me. I mean, I see it kind of as a novelty uh, when I'm just when I kind of want to just have fun and not take it too seriously. That's when I'll use the the uh, cloak and dagger. I mean, sometimes at choke points, it's good to use it to just hang out, and since they're preoccupied, you can set up something nice. I, I agree uh, with the usage for cloak and dagger when you want to chill out. It's like, I'll be I'll be try-harding in a pub every now and then, and then it's just like, I'm going to go put on cloak and dagger your eternal reward. And <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you just, just try to nice do music. stupid stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, any, anything that you think needs to be said about Cloak and Dagger, anyone else? It's quite nice that you don't have to rely on metal for it, so it can, like, if you can do it right, you can be quite unpredictable with it. Like, you know, there's a level of predictability with, like, the Invis watch, because you always end up going for an um, ammo pack at one end. But, you know, with the Cloak and Dagger, sometimes you can get away but without moving anywhere at all. I mean, you can still, since I play a lot of pubs, you can still top score, like, the same that, I mean, I could still top score with the same that I could with any other watch, but it's just like, it's less, I find it less reliable, because I know what I'm going to get with other watches. Sometimes with the cloak and dagger, you don't really know what you're going to get with that, yeah. since the this, the cloak is so variable. It's a you different really time know. of cloak management, because with the other two that are ammo pack focused, whereas the other's based on... Um how how much you move you know yeah, the, uh, the thing about time is like you need a certain amount of uh cloak or whatever for different situations and the situations are always changing so you might need a burst you might need like a quickly you might need a bunch of cloak but with the cloak and dagger you're just stuck if you get it low so that's the problem with that i find myself if i'm just doing like really bad i can't get a pick on the team at all you know they're super paranoid i'll just go cloak and dagger and just calm until, you know, the push happens. Alright. So, uh, I think that wraps it up for the Cloak and Dagger. And Dead Ringer, my favorite watch. Uh, oh, what do yes. you guys think about it? Um, so, usually, uh, I run Dead Ringer because uh, my playstyle, I'm really tanky. So, I like getting a lot of frags. I don't really focus on uh, getting into good positions. I'm always being really aggressive, but that's just how I play. I'm really knife heavy and uh, gun heavy, but um, I just use it to tank a lot of damage. Uh, what do you guys use it for? In Europe you see an awful lot, especially in like Pram and stuff, you see an awful lot of spies just being pure gun spies nowadays. Yeah. Like a lot of it seems to have moved over from... Yeah. Yeah, like, we seem to really like our, like, Spicicle Dead uh, Ring. Yes, 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 yes. I think you guys, quite, you guys quite like your, like, stock in your invis, don't you? Um, but like everyone nowadays seems to just quite using it entirely for using your gun. Mm -hmm. So you got, you know, you got people like Inso and Solid who literally ran that like 90% of the time and top scored and did all some amazing stuff with it. Currently the, uh, the gun spies, uh, at the top these days, um, would probably be Polar. Uh, oh, Polar's so good. Polar's probably the best, uh, spy in Prem currently gun spying. Um, I, I do a fair amount of it myself. I like doing it, uh... Toast, Toast is probably going to go. Up, yeah. yeah, he's going to do really good. Uh, so yeah, I like to use Dead Ringer a lot to enable that gun spy play style. Um, and I'll touch more on about that when uh, we get to more talking about the guns. Uh, but just in general, I love using it for just uh, always ensuring that I'm doing something. Because Invis and Cloak and Dagger, um, 
even though they can make these like really game changing plays, uh, th th there's a sense of unreliability to it that uh, the other classes don't really have. Uh, you know, you can't guarantee some things are spice sometimes, and uh, Dead Ringer can just take that element out altogether and always confirm that you're doing something if you're playing a gun heavy playstyle. So, I really like Dead Ringer for just keeping me alive. Because that thing with the Invis Watch is if you screw up that one play, you might have spent like a minute or 30 seconds trying to get it, and you're screwed. You've just wasted a huge amount of time. But, but if you d run the DR, uh, if you can, you know, do it well enough or you're playing passive, you can, you know, just keep making attempts and sometimes. Uh, if, you, if you spam it an awful lot, like if there's a dead sentry or something, you can push them off quite a bit. Like some the people get really confused, yeah. don't they? Oh, sorry. Okay. The Dead Ringer is a very forgiving watch, but that's not saying that you should use it as a crutch. No, oh, no. But um, I also find it's quite good if like you haven't had any practice that day or feeling not too great. It's quite good as just kind of a sit back and shoot things weapon. Like you don't have to huh. get really into it. You don't have to try really hard. You don't have to, you know get into the mentality, you need to get these picks, you need to get movement, it's just kind of, you know, like a like a sit back and hold out the controller kind of weapon. I kind of agree with the DR, it's like you can just throw on some nice music, you know, chill a little bit. You don't really have to think as hard as you do with the InvisWatch because it forces you into situations, the DR forces you into situations that the InvisWatch, you would have to think about the exact time that you're going to decloak on somebody. With the DR, you can just decloak around a corner and you know, be fine with that. Decloak next to a metal pack, and you don't really have to think about the exact time you have to decloak and the exact positions. I mean, you need to get into good positions, but I mean, it's not that hard. You just run with the the DR. You don't have to really manage the cloak as much. I also find that a lot of teams, uh, especially in like mid lower divs, they don't understand quite what you can do with the DR. A lot of people seem to think that like you're going to have to run miles away and hide behind a wall. But then sometimes there's places on maps that you can abuse and like decloak right in front of the enemy and they can't hear you. So I've oh, got like quite a good, good few picks just like decloaking in front of them when they haven't expected it. Yeah, you can also decloak right next to somebody and let them hear the decloak sound and then use that against them if you, try and, set up a, yeah, if you try and set up a trick stab or something. Which is, I think why I like the DR is because it just lets me trick stab so much uh, in most of my frag videos. Even though I use the InvisWatch just as much as I use the DR. <clears throat> I mainly show the DR because it's just, you get way more trick stabs, way more fun plays with it. And I think they both, both watches, the, tr the DR and the InvisWatch, they both have their times that you should be using. Like in choke points, you should probably put on the DR. Uh, on smaller maps, you should probably use the DR. And then on open maps, that's when I like to use InvisWatch. And I'm kind of a big believer in using all the watches, not just using one. So I yeah, kind of maybe. switch it up all the time. I think the DR might also um, kind of conf uh, make your the type of we weapons you can use like less. You can't use as many. It tends to be quite you know ambi or revolver. I don't tend to see many people running it with letranger or anything else. Oh, let me tell you, my strat for pushing bad water third point, the Tranger Spicycle Dead Ringer, pretty oh, much God. guarantees I can yes. get behind because a pyro locks down that area. So... Oh God, you're right, aren't you? Is that the bit with the dispenser? Yeah. I hate that spot. You know you can run um, a soldier with a whip to body hop over the top? Yeah, yeah, but uh, my solly rarely gets into boiler to be able to do that, so... I oh, know. yeah. It's, I guess it's pretty good for that. But, um, I think, I think if there's overall... a dispenser at third point, it's just awful, because you can't do anything about it unless you, like, taunt killer or so. <laughs> yeah, we're or going on a tangent now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I use the... I know you guys talked about gun spies a lot. I really like to use the DR with the Latranger though. And I I don't know man, I love to use the knife a lot. I can use the gun, my aim's pretty good when I when I start using the ambi a little bit, but I don't know, it's just more fun to get the stabs just straight up with the with the knife than use yeah. the gun. Maybe in comp it's better to use the gun, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't really know. Yeah, I when you get... it's quite good for chain stabs. When you get like a trick stab on someone, they're like, oh my god, I love you, but when you get a headshot, they're like, oh, nice shot. So I guess it's kind <laughs> of a, I guess it's kind of an ego boost to do Do you want stabs. to enrage your enemies, or do you want them to respect you? The constant battle. <laughs> when I trick stab people, they never say they love me afterwards. <laughs> Fuck you, Slucky. Face stab. Exactly. Face. Yeah, and so many of those mad son slaughterhouse. Uh, and they say BS, that, that stab wasn't legit. That's yeah, face stab. Uh, that's a dead ringer then. Uh, Rice, you there, dude? I think he's dead. We have to Rip. resuscitate him. Oh, Rip in peace. He was running in with his watch. Let's carry on oh, no. without him then, hope he comes back. Uh, 
dun, 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 dun. Sad violin. So, uh, when and why do we change watches? Oh, that's a good one. Discussed it. Oh no. Hmm? You're alive. So, um, I mean, I like to, uh, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in, um, you know, there, there is no best loadout. Like, there, there might be some way you want to run more than often, but every, every watch has its place. Um, you know, if you're looking for a specific pick, uh, running Dead Ringer probably isn't going to enable that. Um, if you're looking to stay alive, uh, in, in, Invis probably, uh, isn't going to be able to do that as well as maybe a Dead Ringer could. And, uh, you know, I think what watches, uh, they, they each have their own purpose, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love to switch up my watches. One, like, the typical pub for me would be maybe I'm switching loadouts three or four times. I mix and match all the time. I think each weapon has its specific purpose. And I think really, I made a video about this, but I think really, if you want to get really good at spy, at least for me, you know, learning every weapon and all their strengths and weaknesses really helped me become a lot better. Uh, I use the DR at choke points, like I said, smaller maps, uh, and then I tend to switch it to the Invis watch when it's more open, uh, when I can move around, when I need more timing, uh, and I use the Spicicle when there's uh, typically more pyros or I just need more survivability. I use the Enforcer when I want to kill the, te the tellies and the sentries really quickly. Uh, Ambi sometimes when you can't get an NG, he's too far away. You can use that. Uh, the the only what, the only things I don't really use is the cloak and dagger and the big earner, which I think need to be fixed, changed. Uh, I don't really use the diamondback either. The kunai is good for chain stabs or just uh, fun. Yeah, just for fun. Uh, it's probably spicycle and kunai is my two favorite right now. I think the weapon choices lead us on to um, one big debate with oh, Thomas yeah. guys is revolver or ambassador? Ambassador. Long question. That never has an answer, apparently. Honestly, I like revolver. I have pretty good aim. But um, I feel that the time that I can land three shots on somebody is I can kill someone faster than trying to aim at the ambassador. My ambassador aim isn't too good, but um, I don't know. I like the revolver. It does a lot of damage. I find myself using the revolver on like King of the Hill maps because it's smaller and you can put out more damage. I think um, the question in itself is a bit inherently flawed because both, like each, uh, each gun, uh, it, it, they serve different purposes. You know, the ambassador is um, focused around burst damage, you know, it's more, uh, it's, it's more like the knife, you know, you're looking to insta-kill people, or scare people, you know, uh, that's what the Ambi's about, and it's got like this really long range shot, it's not meant for getting up into people's faces, whereas the revolver, it's, um, it's more of a self-defense tool, you know, it's like, yeah. if you fail to pick, a uh, revolver's going to be helping you out much more than the ambassador, because you don't have to worry about getting that really precise headshot, you can just, uh, just go gun crazy and just, uh, you know, try and hit free shots on someone, and that'll probably kill them. Um, you know, it's in, it's entirely down to how you like it. I mean, um, th there was uh, the French spy hard, very good revolver spy, uh, and he he made it seem like he was like one of the greatest weapons ever. A lot of uh, it's very hard. People hard converted though, yeah. because of him. He got he got a bunch of people to start playing spy like scout basically. It's so like the revolver just seems like the scatter gun, and the that's a fun more like a sniper rifle. Yeah, yeah, that's a fun comparison that I hear a lot. Uh, a lot of people like to make. I think what I like to think of is like uh, the revolver is really good, just like as an all-round DM tool. But the ambi is like e even if you don't have really good aim with it, you can run it because sometimes it's really good. Even if you can't get the kill to at least cripple someone, and like you know, if you don't use it, you're never going to get particularly good with it. But I think. Some, sometimes you're not going to be able to get that medic in three shots, but if you can flick a hundred on him, your soldier can very easily bomb him. I imagine in pubs, though, like, it would be much better to learn the revolver overall, because like the ambi takes you know, a fair bit of time to learn, and you know you have to be in certain cer certain circumstances to be able to learn it properly. Whereas just you know spamming at people standing still in pubs, you might as well just use a revolver. I think. Right, right. 
I think the question is because we were just talking about why, when, and why do you change watches? I think it should more be asked when and why do you change guns? I agree. Because I, I mean, when I did play competitive, I used the revolver a lot because you can just three shot a medic, and what's better than that if you miss a stab? Um, it's almost guaranteed every time if you if you've got good aim. But if I mean. I'll use the ambassador on open maps or corridor type maps um, that are easier for headshots, but I think the revolver's a better strength choice um, to actually pick someone um, at a more appropriate time. Uh, I definitely, I definitely well, agree. I don't think that spies should really be asking, is this better than this? I think they should be asking, is this better for this situation? Yeah. I think the revolver is better if you don't need to take long-range shots. I mean, if you do need to take long-range shots, then why would you use the revolver? You're going to switch it over to the ambassador. If you can get the headshot, though, it also depends on your aim. And then the enforcer, I mean, you're going to use that if you want to. It, well, that you could... I think that would be a better question, revolver versus uh, enforcer, because they're both for sort of the same reason. I mean, the bastard and revolver, they're very different. So I don't think that comparison is really a good one. If I had to uh, make a choice, though, um, between, like, revolver and ambassador, um, I would go with ambassador. And uh, being expensive Frank videos. Cause, cause, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's oh, you three shot at a medic. Shot. That's so lame. Oh, the clutch headshot! So, oh, it looks so, so much sick. cooler. Uh, Ego stroke. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, but no, I, I really like the the ambi a lot more because um, constantly I find myself at um, range. You know, the, it's like whenever you're not cloaking behind your enemy, I like to use the practice of whenever I'm not going behind the enemy, I like to be shooting them. And uh, most of the time uh, when I'm shooting them, I'm not in their face. I'm at quite a range by my teammates. And... Um, I, don't know, I just feel I can put out more damage at that range with an ambi shot than um, I can with a revolver. An ambi's safer. If you're going to be fighting a soldier, I'd much rather be at like medium long range and two shot him than like kind of closest range and hit him with like four or five shots. Yeah. So I think it's quite good if you want to play quite nice and passive. The ambi's quite good for that. But then again, it's also good for being aggressive. So I'm not too sure about that. It's quite good for being a flank class, I think, because like if you can uh, headshot someone, your scout can like really easily finish them off from any range. The real question, though, much. is that uh, the ambassador can do this, but how do you practice ambassador aim? Oh, that's a good, that's a good one. Do you not think that was an amazing segue into the next topic? That was such topic? a good that's segue. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't really weigh in on the Dead Ringer thing much because I'm the opposite of all of you, so I didn't want to get into it. But back when I was trying to get really good at spy, I I named my Dead Ringer Ambassador Practice. Because I just I just go onto bad water and just headshot people for two hours straight and just feign all the time. Um, so I mean I think that's a really good way to practice um, for when you're really starting out, I guess. My answer is pretty much the same, Mister Bias. Uh, just going on a pub and uh, using nothing but your ambi. Uh, Stumble dying. Oh, robot. Yeah. Probably do with the fact that I'm in England. Uh, um, yeah, I like to just do what Tobias does. Uh, just only use my gun, no stabbing. Uh, and o over a period of like two weeks or something, you should start seeing a big improvement if you just uh, stick to that. I think Badwater and Harvest are like the two my two favourite maps for that. I like Orange, but don't count Orange. It's not a real map. Like Harvest is very good because it's quite flat overall and it's quite open, so there's a lot of people you always be shooting. And Bad Water's just kind of a nice map overall for Spy. There's a lot of health packs, a lot of ammo packs, there's a lot of corners to run around. You can learn, like, you know, waiting for a scout to run around a corner, that kind of thing. Yeah, I pretty much agree with them that just going and be only rounds for a long time is the way to do it. Uh, there's also other little things, like you can use your strafe keys to line up shots when you're starting out. Uh, and, you know, get a good crosshair. Yeah. Those are pretty much the general tips that I would oh, give. Yeah. Use um, a green or pink crosshair, or like a white with a black background. Don't use like black. Yeah, yeah. a flashing one. Get get Stabby's color changing script. You'll be the best spy in the game. <laughs> you'll also have epileptic hey, fits when you against scouts. Um, um, when I first started using ambassador, like, and then I found that my NBA aim improved. I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but I get to a peak where 
I'd be really good at it, and then it started diminishing. And then once I switch up my crosshair, um, it gets even better than it was before. Uh, it's just me, but I switch up my crosshair a lot. Yeah, I switch my crosshair often. That. But I think something like that's more of a placebo thing. It's like you you sort of trick yourself into thinking it's different, and then yeah. uh, it's a different experience, and it feels uh, like you're playing a different game altogether, and you do better, and yeah. It's, it's like a bit good. of a wake up call. It's like, oh, you know, I'm not, I can't be comfortable with this nice green plus. I now have a red plus. Ugh. I mean, I, I prefer changing my crosshair every other week rather than my sensitivity, you know? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I think I had that the other day, though. I changed from having like a green dot, but That's I think I'm extra tip. solid. For your amb- if you want to practice ambassador aim, do not change your sensitivity around. Pick oh, one God. sense and, don't, and stick to it. Like, changing <laughs> sensitivity every, like, every other day isn't going to make you better. You need to build up the muscle memory. about zoom scripts? And how you shouldn't use them. Scripts in general, that should be a topic. Zoom scripts, though, specifically, because I've oh, seen yeah. a lot of people that try to use, like, sensitivity dropping scripts whenever they change their gun. For, like, uh, long shots with that. the ambassador. I know Stabby um, heavily uses that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of switching your sensitivity. I've been using the same sensitivity since I started. I don't really use scripts. I don't know if that's going to be a topic, but... I really believe in those sensitivity changing scripts. I mean, just, script should be just, something. Yeah, just set one sensitivity and stick with it. Don't change it all the time. Yeah. I mean, I use one sense, but um, I use a view model script, so it gets rid of my revolver. I played a lot of uh, Quake, so there's really small view models, and I don't know, it, it kind of feels like Quake when I'm aiming at <laughs> my revolver, so. Mm. I mean, so that's just using me, but... the um, railgun. Yeah, I use just, a, a, a model script. Just to round off this uh, topic of practicing ambient, I want to uh, quickly ask the question: uh, Spy MG useful? No, or not? it's fun. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's really good to improve your trick stab game. Is it? <laughs> I don't no. know. It's good to scare your friends into thinking you're good at spy. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't. I don't think it's useful. But then there's spies like Hard and who like swear by it and and can sit, think it's like the most brilliant thing ever. And then he's like one of the best revolver spies Breaking in the UPREM. Mm, uh, I think it's just because he's basically doing scout MG that I've. I don't think played against him. Yeah, I played against spies opinion, that he's so played against. Spy the... MG is just a, an extension of scout yeah. MG. Like, just ADAD yeah. spam roll. Yeah. It's a good way to rank up your strangers. Oh, it's very good for that. How about games outside of TF2 to somehow uh, improve your overall aim? Quake Live. Quake, Quake, Quake Live Quake. and uh, Tribes Ascend when it was still popular. Those, g- those games were fucking great for practicing uh, aim. Well, I actually, I played CS before I played TF2, and I attribute a lot of my spy skills to actually playing CS. Not my aim, necessarily, but a lot of the stealth tactics I learned in CS, they carried over to TF2. And I had like a good start, a good base off of that. And ninja diffuses. Exactly. Ninja saps. Ooh. Ninja backstabs. Oh yes. Trick stabbing people in CSGO. Oh my god. <laughs> Before it was cool. Alright, so... We talked about Ambassador. Uh, we're gonna start going into all the weapons and... Uh, what do you guys think about the weapons? So, start off, uh, Leitron J. Well, the Tron J. I love it. I ran it. Literally. I ran it religiously last season. So I think it's um, one of the best side grades. Uh, yeah. It's a very good side grade. It's not fun, but it's really good. Yeah. I don't I run really... it because I like spamming my gun, but it's really good. I find it really fun for trick stabbing. It's not just the guns, guns though. It's like shooting shooting. Well, I kind of like shooting it actually. I kind of like shooting people. Shoot I think killing someone with the Litranger is just as uh, satisfying as killing someone with, someone with the Ambassador because it's, it has its own level of difficulty to actually take down a target, especially like a heavy or a soldier. I think it's the equivalent of using like a Rap Assassin to kill someone versus Scattergun. Like, it's funny to do, but it's really not something you should be doing often. Mate, well. can you even comprehend my Fan of War kill streak? Oh, how much was it? I don't Come have on. a Fan of War kill streak. 400. <laughs> wow, that's really good. And the M bots. Oh, so good. Uh, I, I no, like the Tron. Really Go ahead. Uh, I, I like to run uh, the Tron J every now and then. For the really uh, big 5CP maps where I don't feel like gun spying and I don't want to admit that I need the cloak and dagger, 
Uh, I like to put on the Latrange with Invis and have like a good, I don't know how long it is actually, but maybe like 16 seconds of cloak time, something like that. It's insane. With the stock, it yeah. gives you four more seconds. With the cloak and dagger, it's two. And the dead ring, it's about three, I think. It's a fair bit. Mm. Cloak, I think if, uh, a lot of people like, uh, if you put it on the cloak and dagger, like the Trangio cloak and dagger, you could essentially it turn watch. into an invis, yeah. But like, I really like running it, but I really hate running it because I get scared without my gun, because I have like no self-defense tool. If I'm caught out with a scout and the letter on Jay, if he can eat any meat shots, I'm dead. Yeah, I try to uh, like scout out maps beforehand and uh, find out wh when I can't use the Latrange. And if I'm ever in a situation where it's like, I don't know, it's just put on the Latrange and let's be safe. It's also bad if you want to go for the sniper. Because like, you know, on process, you might want to run it because it's huge. But then when it comes to their sniper, you'll have to shoot him four or so times, unless you're right in his face. And yeah. that's enough time for like a good sniper to shoot you dead. So yeah. Um, I think it's good if you're really knife heavy. Oh, it's very good for um, that. I'll, for a while I was only knife. I was really knife heavy and uh, I ran Dead Ringer. And I think it's good if you can hit your shots and recharge the Dead Ringer. Um, I think it's, it's good. It can substitute I mean, for a gun. Even if you don't use it to shoot people and get cloak, you just get extra cloak anyways when you pick up metal. And in that aspect, it's really good. And it, it's also good if you have to travel longer distances. Uh, that's mainly what I use it for. You can just get away with more things with it, not necessarily using it as a gun, but for the extra cloak. Yeah. It makes you less predictable, because you don't have to go for that ammo pack, you can go for the one across the map. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of why I choose it. It fits my playstyle really well. Um, I I basically only switch between... Uh, the Letranger and the Ambassador, um, because I, yeah, I, I agree with all that. Like, you don't have to go for the ammo pack that's right there. You can um, stab someone and then just you know book it, and they're completely oblivious as to where you went because you didn't try and go for the ammo pack that's right there or a weapon that had fallen or all of that business. And also, the ability to just stay invisible longer is going to throw people off a little bit, uh, since everybody doesn't use the Letranger. It's also good for leveling a strange invis watch, you can't forget that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it also helps your timing. Oh, uh, you get more... Hmm. Get it gives more you more time. Yeah, yeah, you, it gives you more time to set up the exact time you want to decloak, instead of pushing you out early. Hmm. You can basically just sit on full metal packs forever, if you wanted to. Because <laughs> we're like the stock, you can stand in a full ammo box and, for indefinitely, if you time it right. I think with the letter on J, it's pretty... Like, 100% of the time you can stand on it indefinitely. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Right. It takes 10 seconds to respawn and, and you have 10 clicks. I use that a lot to deny NG's metal, because I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Alright, it looks like uh, JC has to head out, but... Uh, we keep on going. Oh, right, so... Right. Hi, JC. See you, JC. Bye. Um, he left. No, Enforcer. Uh, never top. run it, because it's banned. It's garbage, don't use it, don't use it. I don't know enough about this weapon to really comment on it, but it's just know it's stupid. It's a scatter like gun it. for the spy, because it can two-shot scouts. I don't like it, it makes me sad. I know it's politically incorrect to like it, but I actually enjoy the Enforcer. But, that's for usually destroying buildings, I don't really use it to kill people. If I just want to go take out tellies real quick, I'll throw on the Spicicle, the DR, uh, and the big earner, or not the beginner, the, oh, uh, the enforcer, and I'll just go run, run straight to the tellies and destroy him. And then I'll switch out, switch mm. it back to the tranger. I think In it's that more aspect, of a crunch. it's good. It's more of a crunch than the DR is, because the DR has circumstances where it's different to the stock. The, the enforcer's just better, really. Basically, if you, if you don't have any friends, feel free to use the enforcer. Won't make any, but, um, you know, <laughs> I assume if you don't have any in the first place, uh, then you didn't ever want any. So y you you are mighty fine using that Enforcer. You will destroy everyone, just get a pocket med, take all the Ubers, you, you'll be a hero. To 144 with crits. Mm. And by yeah. a hero, I mean a villain. We will hate you. Everyone will hate you. <laughs> uh, but nah, uh, uh, just, I, I, I'm a... I'm, I was always one of those people when it came to, uh, you know, uh, for like fighting games. I was like, oh, don't use that cheap tactic. Uh, 
I'm very much like that before, <laughs> so I, I just I just can't bring myself to use it. I take the opposite route. I think if it's in the game, why not use it? I mean, you don't exploit it, but they're all tools to use. I think at different times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's up to you, really. So, um, that being said, what's your guys take on the Diamondback? It's like How's a shitty Ambu. Uh, don't like the Diamondback. I I actually think it's quite good. Um, Sounds I, cool. Yeah, I, I think um, I I've managed to get a lot of uh, use out of it in sixes. Uh, it's allowed in sixes. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's allowed in sixes. I've been able to uh, just decloak behind some uh, behind a demo, stab him, and then turn around and just like two shot the med, and. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's pre- it's a pretty like I we haven't I haven't been able to experiment uh, with it much. I think in in pubs it's insanely good because um, you know you, you you just being able to get that stab uh, and just sapping uh, tellies and stuff like that will give you a ton of crits to work with. Yeah, um, and you you can really go you can really just like just being able to destroy a fully buffed heavy is absolutely hilarious when you've got like four crits stored. It's fantastic. <clears throat> I think my dilemma with the uh, Diamondback is, I feel like, why do I need the crits when I can just throw on the ambassador and headshot somebody? I think that's my main dilemma, why I don't use it. That's and probably I mean, why, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's fun, it's quite good, I guess, if you're starting out on Spy, I imagine, it's a pretty good, like, learning tool for just getting aimed down in the first place, because you can reliably kill people, rather than, like, I, you know, with a stock, you might reliably kill people. I don't know, man. Those body shots are hard, harder than headshots sometimes. I think sometimes. it's uh, <laughs> the, the Diamondback mentality screws me over so hard. Me too, like, me I got too. five crits, need to hit these, uh, miss everything. Yeah, um, exactly. But then, I, I think the knife heavy spy could benefit quite a lot from running it. Oh, it's really it? good with kunai. Um, <clears throat> I've been running kunai with uh, Diamondback and Deadringer and pubs. Um, you get a lot of stabs and you rank up a lot of crits and I, don't know, I use it because if you're really knife heavy you get a lot of crits. If you want to have a lot of fun in a pub, it's really go, fun. go get a friend, uh, one of your friends to be an enemy scout, uh, get, give him, make sure he's running bonk and then just meet him, farm a crap ton of backstabs and then go destroy his team with like 50 <laughs> crits. I think they patched that out recently. Oh did they? Uh, I think I they might patch that out, yeah. I do not uh, know. It was really fun when it was allowed, but I think a couple updates ago they said uh, you can't get crits from like Ubers and Bonks and stuff anymore. But okay, think... don't do that then. You can do it with a Razorback though, if you have a friend with a Razorback. <laughs> and a Metal Unit. <laughs> level his strange Razorback for him. Yeah, but I think Carlazzo nailed uh, the dilemma with the Diamondback. I mean, once you run out of crits, that's it. With the Ambassador, you crits all day if you can headshot. Hmm. So I I went AFK and I didn't hear everything, but my opinion on the Diamondback is that it's the poor man's ambassador. Yeah. It looks cooler though. Uh. It used to hurt my eyes, but then I ran it and now I like it, it's okay. It sounds pretty cool as well, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Phew, that kind of noise. Rather than like, you know, the ambi breaking your ears every time you headshot someone. Oh, I've, I've grown to love it though. It still hurts my ears. <laughs> All right, Spicicle. Oh boy, this yes. this lovely, lovely weapon. You just um, run it. I'm gonna uh, because I am a competitive focus spy. Um, I don't play that many pubs. If I played more pubs, I would probably be a bit more neutral on this weapon. Um, but because I play a an insane amount of competitive, I will go ahead and say that this knife is entirely unbalanced. It is so good, in my opinion. It is just absolutely hilarious to be able to um, survive a pyro attacking you. And even having just silent kills in the kill feed can throw people off. Um, I, ju- I just think it's an absolutely insane knife. It can be really good if you like. I was playing Asheville earlier, and like there were about four or five people on point. I managed to kill about three of them before anyone turned around, just because there was no screaming. Like people would have yeah. called it out in mumble, but there would have been a lot of screaming in mumble anyway because they were pushing last. So it's really noise. good for that. Yeah, and like the noise for the crackle, like, it it's really not a big a deal to be honest. The, I imagine in pubs it's quite bad if you've got the um, ragdolls on and people can tell where you are. But then I think that can be a pretty good leading tool. Because you can be like, oh, that pyro's always going to chase me, so I'm going to make a bunch of statues over here and shoot him in the face. I mean, I think the Spice School is really good in pubs also. It's like, 
I don't know, I wouldn't say it's unbalanced in pubs, but it's like borderline. I mean, you can just hang out with a spice school and biz all day long and just set up whatever you want without ever taking any damage if you're moving around right, if you're timing things right. I mean, it's just a really good watch, I think, with the Invis watch, especially for lining stuff up and just timing stuff perfectly. I personally I love it when um, I'm just, you know, really focusing on uh, gunning because um, it's like we're, we're, if I take two scenarios where, like, I'm trying to backstab a med who's got a pyro watching him, but I find an opening, um, it's like if I go in with the knife, uh, but, like, I screw up the stab, um, then I've got to resort to gunning him, which me- which I could or uh, could not fail because of, like, uh, you know, flames. Uh, you know how hard it is to aim sometimes when, like, the flame is just, like, moving your, uh, like your aim rack up and down all mm-hmm. the time, and the damage, and, you know, it's a panic thing being put on fire. Uh, a spice core can eliminate that for two seconds and allow you to just get those two shots in with no need to worry. Uh, it's the sound of, like, sliding into a hot tub. It's like, oh... I can I can shoot people now. <laughs> it does sound kind of like that. <laughs> like that. I just like it. I mean, I'll be honest. Um, it's, it does have it, uh, its own downside. Like, there, there is an infuriating feeling when it's just like you set up for ages, like you're about to backstab that med, and then just tss, crap. I think if you, <laughs> in comp, if you really need that one pick, you run stock. Because mm. if you really need that pick, if you really need that one pick, you're going to really try and outmaneuver the pyro. Whereas, if, you know, if you're just kind of running around having a bit of a piss about, uh, Spice Squad's pretty good because you can just stay alive forever and you don't really care too much. Mm, I agree with that. But, um, yeah, for pubs, I'd say uh, use Knife because it's a bit more fun, yeah, you know, going for trick stabs trick stab and pirates. whatnot. Uh, I, I've trick stabbed a lot of pirates with the Spice Squad as well. They are not, in pubs sometimes, they're not as good. It's not as good. Never, never too pleased when you, like, stair stab a pyro that knows what a stair stab is with the Spicicle. It's like an extra ego boost. That's like the mm. ultimate shutout. <laughs> like, I don't even need to shoot you. I'm going to kill you with my knife that you can counter with one particle. Sorry. If it's a blind stab, though, they don't even know. So it's like, it's what, are they, what are they even going to do? Look at their amazing, beautiful statue I crafted in about half a second. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and another thing about the Spice School is, even if you miss... The or not miss, even if uh, you go for a stab and the pyro takes it out, usually, if usually you can get away by going in viz and you can just get into a better position while you're waiting for it. It's not like you're just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, a good spy, when they're gonna get shot out with the spy school, they're gonna get they're going to get into a better position right away or further back to take out tallies or something like that. It sounds very good for leading pyros away, because a lot of pyros, I mean most pyros, when they're uh, facing up a bicycle spy, you kind of hold the flamethrower around him and listen. It's pretty good if you want to kind of go one way and go the other way, because you can lead them into thinking that you're going into that house on viaducts, but in fact you turn around and go up the rock. Yeah, I mean, you can really mess with pyros with the spice school and Vizwatch. There's a lot of games, pubs, where there's four pyros on the other team just spy checking and they still can't get me because I'm leading them all in different directions and wherever they're not, that's where I am. So it's just really good for stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, uh, you guys are all saying pretty good things. Uh, I pretty much only use it for what Slurgy just mentioned. Like there's so many pyros and you just want to confuse them, make, make them go the other side of the map so that you can deal with the rest of the team. I mean, I think, I personally think Invis Watch, Spicicle, and Ambassador um, is the best way to deal with, or, or or to piss off Pyros on a pub, just for fun. Yeah. I mean, basically, if you're leading them somewhere else, it's just, sometimes it's even better than killing them, because they're just wasting their time looking for you, not doing anything. Not... Oh yeah, they're they're not focused on the objective at all. Yeah, at least if you kill them, like, they respawn and they go straight back into it. If you just confuse them and leave them somewhere, they could be there for a while. Mm-hmm. So, um, that goes to Spy School. Now, going into one of the most underused knives in the game, uh, the Big Earner. Uh, what do you guys think about that? It's good for 3M. <laughs> <laughs> 
I agree with that. <laughs> when that's the, the that's the first thing that comes to mind <laughs> when you think of this when you think of this item, you know something needs to be changed about it. Um, uh, no, I, I just know. think um, the the yeah, upside we, that it gives can you. Can we just is, skip the figure? It's yeah, not a good knife. Just going over it quickly, like uh, the upside that it gives you just isn't enough. It's like you're you're already going it's to not. be near. Uh, like at, at very least half cloak just by picking up whoever you just backstabbed anyway. So oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's there's really not much point in taking a 25 health reduction for no reason and just getting one shotted by like soldiers and scouts and everything. So there's just no reason to run it. The best thing about the big earner is the crafting potential. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 I actually took the time to like try to. "Quote unquote master the beginner. I managed to get twenty five thousand kills on one. Um, Impressive. Yeah, I ran twenty five thousand kills. That could have gone on a knife worth using. I <laughs> ran it all season, like season twelve, I think, trying to get good at it, but um, it's definitely not worth it. Admitted but, defeat um, in the end. Of it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not worth it. Yeah, I mean that's how people are like, you know, where is? Oh, he's that guy who uses the beginner. Did, did you watch like Tobias video uh, Tobias's videos and was like I want to be just like him but with the big earner uh, but then you realize you couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I actually made a, a health hacks video once where in the beginning I previewed that I was going to start a cloak hacks series using the big earner and everyone freaked out <laughs> and didn't understand that it was a joke. Well, Sorry uh... about guys. So yeah, it's speaking okay. of, um, that's enough for the big earner. And speaking of uh, Tobias, then, how about uh, he leads this next uh, topic because he knows so much about it, the Conover's Kunai. Um, well, I started using it because of my good old friend, What's Your Deal? Um, if you guys are familiar with him, he used to I be... Miss I miss him. What is, what is he up to these days? We'll, we'll talk about that in <laughs> personal chat. Um, uh, he's, a, he's a really good friend of mine, and he introduced me to it, and... Um, I'd been playing Spy probably for about five or six hundred hours um, at that point, and coming up on like five thousand hours later, I've pretty much only used the kunai, um, just because uh, I was I've always pretty much been Invis watch heavy, and I think it's the best watch to use with the kunai, um, just because that that buff that you can get from the first stab. Um, Oh, gosh, I, there, there's so much to say. I don't, I don't really know how to how to start. I think it's great for chain stabbing. It's great for escapes, especially with the Invis watch, and that's been my playstyle for a long, long time now. And I'm sure I can come up with other things to say as you guys start to talk about it as well. Yeah, I think the kunai really more than anything else, uh, it's for people who have a really good sense of timing because in movement too as well because you need to move around with that low amount of health but you also need to know the exact time to come out where you don't take any damage but you can also get the stab off i mean it's a really precise knife and you i think it's uh probably one of the hardest uh loadouts if you're running something like invis kunai the Tranger, or ambassador to use but it's really it's one of the best also i was obsessed with it for a while i used it a really long time and i still use it. it's one of my favorite knives to use uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a good knife. And you, you bring up a really good point too. Is um, with the Invis watch. Um, gosh, I'm already spacing. Um, oh, with the with the movement. Um, if I use it a lot on 32 man servers uh, with the Invis watch, and I, I I really like puzzles as a person, and I think the greatest puzzle for a spy is using the kunai and the Invis watch and figuring out how to get around all the damage successfully um, in order to give yourself that buff um, and, you know, in order to survive. I think that's one of the funnest things about the knife is it's just a puzzle that you've got to figure out how to get around everybody. I, um, I, I see your point there. Um, and to a degree, I, I, I agree with it uh, in the sense of... Um, you know, having fun with it, because in pubs, um, I love throwing on the kunai from time to time and, uh, you know, undertaking challenges like that, or just, like, being silly and just going for trick stabs, uh, stuff like that. But, um, unfortunately, I can't really vow for its effectiveness in a competitive format, um, because even though you can, uh, you know, do these things that you said, like, uh, you know, taking your time and avoiding this damage, um, 
I just don't feel the time that you spend trying to really avoid this, uh, the, these things which will complicate really uh, is worth the reward that you're going to be get from getting the stab. I just don't think getting uh, like a 60 health bonus or uh, whatever it is, I think it's 60, um, is necessarily worth going through the aggro of trying to get through a bunch of random spam or flanks which are constantly being uh, contested by your uh, flankers anyway. I just find it really hard to get effectiveness out of the knife in comp when I could, uh, when most of the time, it, even if it's a flank that's less travelled, I, I almost always end up like taking like 10 damage or something, uh, where I'd flicker for a little bit of a second. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know, I, I don't get that much use out of the kunai. Uh, I absolutely love the kunai, you get so many kills with it. Um, especially after you get a first stab, I think a lot of people... Um, like Toby has said in his guide, it's either a love or hate thing, and uh, I think the reason why people wouldn't like it is because they're having trouble getting the first stab. But I mean, once you get that first stab, you stay alive for so long, especially when uh, servers are more crowded and um, you're playing really knife heavy. Uh, chain stabs definitely go off a little easier, and I don't know, I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would say there's a lot of parallels between the Kunai and the Eternal Reward, which is another one of my favorite knives. Yeah, I was going to bring favorites. that up. That, that wasn't on the uh, list of topics here, your Eternal yeah, Reward. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to get that. We should have switched Big Runner out. <laughs> <laughs> Time we'll go wasted. Next. We'll go with uh, Eternal Reward next. No, well, I, I guess I can segue that way um, as well, because I agree with Slurgy. It, it has a lot of parallels with uh, the Eternal Reward. Because you do, with both knives, have to get that first stab, really, in order to be successful in any way. Um, just, you know, with the two knives, once you get the first stab, your modus operandi is going to be different with each knife. Yeah, and I think another thing about the kunai, one of the reasons I really like it is because you can be really aggressive with the kunai. You can get, especially with Invizwatch, I found, uh, you can get that first stab and then go straight into other stabs right away, going in viz, you know, juking people out. If you can keep that health up, you can play really aggressively if your uh, movement's pretty good and still survive. Yeah, move, movement's really key. Um, I think that's the most important thing when trying to use the kunai is mastering your movement, which it takes a long time. And for those of you listening who just missed Slurgy's video on movement, watch it because it's, it's pretty spectacular. Thanks for the plug. But I would agree, <laughs> go watch it. I actually, uh, yeah, I pretty much said everything that, uh, everything that I know about movement I put into a video to try and help, you know, whoever spies, but I'm sure other people could benefit from, uh, from the video. Enemy pirates? Hmm? Enemy pirates? Well, oh, what? No, don't worry, don't worry. Uh. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, that's Kunai. Anything else? You guys think that? It's most fun. fun overall. It's fun, very fun. You wanna have fun? Yeah, he's a Kunai. Unless no, you can't um... get that first stab, then uh, you're not having fun. Yeah. So, Eternal Reward. Um, one big question about Eternal Reward that I see on a lot of Slurgy's comments is uh, how do you get the first stab? Um, mm, people ask that. me that so much. Yeah. I keep uh, saying, all you have to do is go all the way back to the very back of the line and kill the <laughs> easiest person that you can first. It's That's always going to be somebody coming out of spawn, some sniper, somebody not paying attention. You always want to go for the easiest person, the furthest back, and that's usually how you get it. I mean, if you're really good at trick stabs, though, you probably aren't going to be asking why or how you get the first stab, but that's, I mean, once you're at that point, you can just get stabs trick stabbing people. I mean, uh, you were saying with the kunai that it's uh, a really great watch for uh, ch uh, watch. It's a great knife for tra uh, chain stabbing. Um, but I personally think your Eternal Reward is just the best for getting a bunch of different stabs as long as you're patient uh, and you're stabbing and you you know what ones you're going. Uh, you, you're not going to like fail stab as long as you take your time with your stabs. You can just go on huge sprees of stabbing without anyone being the wiser. Um, yeah, I, just, I agree. I, I think it's a uh, it's a, it's a weapon with a lot of potential, and it's definitely one of the most interesting uh, knives, I think. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree with that. That's another parallel between the 
the eternal reward in the kunai is you get tons of chain stabs uh, if you're just patient with it. Yeah, that's what chain stabbing goes like. If I die and I spectate a spy, I'll see a spy get a little bit like overwhelmed when they're trying to chain stab. So I think it's best to just work from uh, like the back towards the front, if that makes sense. Hmm. So um, yeah, I mean that's that's another point. I don't know if that's a topic, but you should always move from the back to the front when you're playing spy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, in Highlander, I don't uh, run the your eternal reward, uh, you know, very often because you know it's hard to guarantee where you're gonna get that uh, first stab. Um, and particular, particularly when there's like a mini NG always around, it's just like uh, it's so difficult. Uh, but every every like one life in uh, like a hundred or so, I'll, I'll put it on, and uh, you can you can make magic with it every now and then. And it's uh, really hilarious to just be able to kill people in front of sentries and <laughs> not having uh, not having the sentry kill you. It's a, it's such a great feeling, not being yeah, dicked yeah. over by a sentry. I usually <laughs> run it when, um, especially taking out sentry nests, it makes it so much easier to take oh, out yeah, sentry nests. Oh yeah, I love running your oh, yeah, ward against NG sentry nests. It's great. Yeah, that's uh, what I use it for a lot is if there's a nest of three <clears throat> sentry side by side, you can just take them all on and not even uh, undisguise. It's pretty much the pinnacle of uh, usefulness for the eternal, the, uh, eternal reward. Mm. Um, another question uh, is um, what watch do you like running with the eternal reward? I know like since they got rid of the Saharan Spy set, you can't run. Uh, I, still, as I, still use the, I still use the Dead Ringer with it. Just because they got rid of the noise doesn't mean much. Uh, it's still just as as uh, effective if you move right, you time things right, you do trick stabs, you get the stab off. Uh, it's not that big of a setback. Well, for me, it depends on the mode. If I'm on um, medieval mode, uh, <laughs> then Dead Ringer, definitely. But, I mean, if it's uh, any other pub, then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm usually using... Uh, Either the Invis or the Cloak and Dagger. Clo cloak and Dagger is probably... Uh, cloak and Dagger, your eternal reward, is probably the most usage I get out of Cloak and Dagger, uh, where I seriously consider it, um, regardless of what I'm playing. Uh, because, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm really focusing on getting that first stab. The first stab is what matters to me, and then I just think, well, I've got a disguise, I'm basically invincible now, so... <laughs> I agree. It works good with the Cloak and Dagger. That's, uh, that's pretty much the only loadout I use with the Cloak and Dagger is uh, with the eternal reward. Alright. Um, now, uh, that leads us into going into trick stabs. I know Eternal Reward requires, or you can do really good Eternal Reward if uh, you have your trick stabs down. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think about trick stabs? Well, uh, just as uh, Tobias was our boy for uh, Kunai, uh, Slurgy is our man for trick stabs. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, what to say? I love trick stabs. They're great. I mean, they're the ultimate, like, mind game you can play with people and it's just like Tobias was saying like there's these little mini games you want to challenge yourself as a spy see if you can not take uh, any damage with Kunai. It's the same thing with trick stabs. You want to see you want to ultimately be able to trick stab everybody and you want to find out it's like a puzzle. You want to find out in which way you can do it. You want to better understand each person and understand how to counter their type of thinking. So it's really it's all about psychology and that's an aspect of spine I really love, which carries straight into trick stabs, and of course they're flashy and awesome. Uh, so yeah, they're not useless in comp. They a lot are. Of people seem to, a lot of people seem to say quite useless. Like Mastodors are really useful, I think. They are useful. Yeah. I think um, a lot of the debate on uh, trick stabs is not really whether they're. Uh, you know that question is asked a lot there, whether they're useful or not. But um, it's rather like uh, when when do you do them? You know, um, and you know, Slurgy has like this really positive um, outlook on trick stabbing. Like he, see, he sees it like, um, you know, as Tobias sees the kunai in that, you know, it, it's a challenge, you know, for, for everyone you come across. It's a little challenge. Like, how am I going to how am I going to get this stab on them? How am I going to uh, like be able to outwit them and get this trick stab? Um, but for me, I've just got a uh, <laughs> I've got too much of a direct sense of think uh, thinking for trick stabs where I'm just like, or why should I, uh, you know, try and go through all this effort to trick stab them? Uh, this is why I don't make have fun in pubs, probably. When I come <laughs> to think of it, <laughs> um, 
But no, it's, 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 it's having fun, fun when, you, when, you, when you don't give a fuck, yeah. Oh, welcome but back, I mean, Jesse. You can also use it to, if you're in trouble, though, you can, I mean, you can, I guess in your sense, you would pull out your gun, but for me, it would be like to go to a trick stab. That's what I'm most comfortable doing. Oh, it's, it's situational for me. Like, sometimes I'll go for the trick stab, sometimes I'll go for for the gun. I mean, more times than not, yeah, I'll probably go for the gun, but, um, you know, every, every now and then a trick stab scenario will come up uh, where I'm just, where I just get this feeling where, like, um, I'm, I'm, there's almost zero chance I'm gonna kill this guy with my gun, so let's try for the trick stab. I find it in competitive, the, the class that I tend to trick stab the most is probably the heavy, and uh, more often than not, it's actually jump stabs, because uh, I just get this feeling, they're like, there's no way he's gonna do something this stupid. <laughs> it's, it's, it works. You know what? I feel the exact same way with heavies, just because, yeah, they think, like, oh, there's no way they're going to pull this off, but they move so slow, and they're, like, looking up in the air, and they don't know which way to turn, and you can always, you know, just trick them out. Yeah. I mean, even when they do turn around, you can, like, not do the normal one, and then, like, go back a little bit, and then, like, reverse, backstab them. Uh, yeah. Which is awesome. I mean, for the psychology aspect, I mean, Snug is yeah. right, it's definitely down, I won't contest that, I mean... Um, I, I remember playing a game against uh, Chess Club a couple of weeks back, uh, one of our top uh, European teams, and um, it was really great because uh, we was pushing up with second and uh, the medic was holding inside the window room and the heavy was on the stairs. And I decloaked by the window room, not making eye contact with the heavy, and it made, me, it, made it seem to him that I was going for the medic. Uh, and then just going out and pulling like a corner, uh, sort of like a reverse corner stab on him. Uh, it's 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 very it's very great to do that kind of outwitting uh, to people, and I, I will agree with Slug. That kind of satisfaction is really great. Uh, when you take the time to actually think it through, I think one of the thing one of the things about better players is they're more predictable than you know n newer players that don't know what they're doing. I mean, with the better player, you're uh. a good player yourself, so you can better understand what they're going to do just by basing off what you would do in their situation mm -hmm. and then that that itself sort of makes the trick stabs easier on them the best thing i heard um anyone say about trick stabs was um you have to give you, the person you want to trick stab something to believe and i think that's such a true statement um if you can make them believe something then uh you you can predict what they're going to do and get the stab on them it's absolutely true every movement you make is making them believe something and the better you can manipulate them the easier it's going to be to trick stab them yeah I, I think one of my favorite examples and something i i do a lot uh is on the third point of bad water when you go up that angled staircase to the attic if you basically just walk up backwards and make a good pyro think that you're gonna try and blind stab them like an overhead stab they're gonna just flame their arrows and be looking up in the air and instead, you can blind corner stab them, and they're not going to know what the hell just happened. Yeah. It's all a mental game. I think a lot of the controversy over trick stabs in better players is people failing to execute their trick stabs on better players. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to fail their trick stabs. Uh, I know there's several platinum spies, higher level comp spies that successfully execute trick stabs all the time on better players so Definitely. i don't think anybody's immune to people really good old trick stab. people really underestimate the speed that's necessary uh, against some competitive players because they're they're really uh, trained to be like really on the dime with their mouse movement uh, you need to be strafing so quick and stabbing earlier than you would like your average pub player i think uh well yeah i absolutely agree it's gonna be a lot tougher and you're gonna need to do uh, a little bit extra to pull them off in something like that when you're playing against a really good player mm. um so jc's back so uh do you have anything to say about chicks to have jc uh yeah um i'm gonna quote watcher dale here and he said part of being a good spy is just having a massive bag of trip tricks up your sleeve and I think that's really true because it's not good if you just know how to stair stab. You know, people are going to wise up to your your better off. Knowing <laughs> nothing, everything. nothing is more uh, you know uh, heart wrenching <laughs> than seeing a friendly spy uh, with a gibbous on just standing at the top of a staircase. Like you just look at it, you'll get there one day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, but uh, good. I'll say one more thing. Uh, just what on JC said is 
I think a lot of the reason a lot of spies trick steps don't work is they a lot of spies starting out they think oh stair step I'll just go to the middle of the stairs and execute it right there I pretty much never do traditional stair steps anymore I mean you jump off props you jump off any kind of elevation I've even you know tele stabs that's one of the first like really wow moments I had that was uh defined my trick stabbing like you do unorthodox things and that makes it much less predictable to anybody else and some of the reasons that some trick stabs work on really good players is they don't even know the prop is there because they don't know the prop on every single map and you can use that to your advantage i completely agree and just one one addition to that is not a lot of them are going to recognize very very slight inclines on the terrain which are is just as useful as like a teleporter stab that's true you know, you can use any kind of elevation to get over somebody. And just because you get trick stabbed doesn't mean you're a bad player. It just means that you didn't know every single little, you know, elevation and every prop on every map. So, I mean, anybody can fall for it uh, if the person, if the spy is good enough to, you know, pull something like that off. I think a great example of a low elevation stab is the, um, the control point on lakeside. It's kind of raised. You can jump yeah. over people using that. That's amazing. I'm gonna start using that. Yeah. See, you you find out new stuff all the time because even though I've been playing three thousand hours, I'm still discovering new things to jump off of, new ways to execute them. Uh, it's just never ending. So, um, any else you guys think needs to be said about trick stabs? I found that like I kind of gave up on them and started just using my gun because I had the mindset that like rather than trying to have fun and you know like get really into it, I just wanted to kill the guy. So I was like, oh, I feel like it might be a little bit more reliable to learn to just shoot the person a couple times. Like there's still moments when I find myself using them, but it's like most of the time my fallback rather than being like, oh, I'm gonna try and master, I'm gonna try and corner them, I'm gonna try and do something really fancy and you know looks pretty and does the job. I'm just like, I give up, I'm lazy, I'm just gonna go for the gunplay. Well, unfortunately, with the way, uh, like, trick stabs are viewed in, um, competitive, it's like, you get uh, if, you, if, you, if you try to go for a trick stab and you bugger it up, it's just like, you try for a trick stab, what a scrub. But it's like, like, oh, <laughs> it's you, that guy who always does that. At least if you go that. down shooting your gun, it's like they're not gonna <laughs> give it up. For... <laughs> I mean, I think it's funny, because I go for trick stabs pretty much all the time, and I get laughed yeah. at a lot for trying them, but... Eventually, I get every person, eventually, and uh, it's really, it's more satisfying when they laugh at you, and then you get them afterwards. Yeah, that's pretty true, I agree with that. I've um, trick stabbed Stabby, I think, like three times now. And yeah, exactly, nobody's like, immune to him. Yeah, nobody's no, immune to it. I've been trick stabbed. I just no, got mad at door the other day, and I was like, oh, good job. So I've, yeah. got, I've got an ego on myself, it's like whenever I'm playing Medic, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll happily get into Ubersaw fights with spies, it's just like, come on, try it, just try it, like, try it. <laughs> it can't be massive. <laughs> and, uh, it, once, like, it, I don't get trick stabbed much, but like, every one, when it, when it does happen, I'm just, I, I just sit back in my chair like, what the fuck just happened? I, I, think that that really happen. I think to myself, I should know how to avoid these things, but no, no, everyone can be trick stabbed, it's definitely true. Yeah. We should do a topic on Nerd Rage. Definitely. <laughs> Alright. Um, now, disguises. Uh, Scout for everything. <laughs> uh, disguises. What do you guys do? Do you guys... I know I like to disguise as... Like, it's a habit of mine, but I disguise as people I kill. So if I kill an NG, like, right after I disguise as an NG. Yeah. That's that's what I like to do, but um, I know a lot of people uh, disguise as classes depending on where on, where on the map you are. Mm -hmm. So, what do you guys like to do? I find myself doing scout with the pistol out all the time. I think I overuse it though. If you disguise and you hold your secondary out, it's like very very convincing. Like demo with the stickies out. Like the number of times you can get a medic to crit see, like if you're in a pub or comp. Just by holding out your sticky bomb launcher is immense. You can jump a little bit, maybe look at them and crouch. Like, yes, back, let's go crit. Backpedaling and fake reloading is amazing. It's so convincing. I mean, mm. um, with disguises for me, um, I, I have an um, 
just in general, I, I get this opinion of um, I, I should never rely on my disguise. Um, you know, my, my I, I think to myself, my cloaking is what's going to uh, get me into, you know, these positions to get the stabs and whatnot. And my disguise is basically just a function uh, where, so, so that their eye can pass over me and not give a second thought. Um, it, you know, if if if, a, if an enemy is looking at me for more than a second, it's like, well, my disguise has failed, you know, um, and, and it's just a means to like get past a mini sentry. But every now and then, like, uh, I'll just decide to, um, y you know, to rely on my disguise every now and then, and just like try it. Mostly when I'm running dead ring, it's just like I'll, I'll throw on the scout disguise and I'll just backpedal, uh, just while spamming space bar. And what do you know? Every now and then, you suddenly find yourself behind a heavy and medic. You just like jump past. It's like, oh, hello, like stabs. I definitely agree. It's a means to an end. I don't rely on these guys at all. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's something that I should work on. But I really don't care too much about my disguise. It's just something to. I don't know. Something to. Uh, minis don't shoot you. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just basically so minis don't shoot you. But I don't no, really uh... put that much thought into it. I I think there's more. Uh, there's better things you can be thinking about than what the right disguise is. Mm. I try and focus more on the timing, the movement, the location of where everybody is, trying to keep track of everybody. I think the disguise isn't that important. I think, I think the, the movement, movement I think the movement while you're disguised is much more important than the actual disguise. Making sure you're going backwards, making sure you're reloading, making sure you're looking, you know, pretending you're looking for somebody, something like that. That's more convincing than mm. having the right disguise at the right so point. The, the key that a lot of people uh, make is that you're, you're not trying to fool anyone. You're trying to avoid everyone. That's the point of the disguise, I think. You're trying exactly. to make it so that you don't draw any attention. Friendly disguises are pretty useful. Like if you disguise a friendly sniper, sometimes you'll get the sniper to think that they've got the sniper down, and then your you know your sniper can do stuff. Or like if you're running in with the DR quite at the start, you know, going friendly pyro is a pretty good way to get in. I find it really irritating when the uh, the opposing spy uses a friendly disguise, and then I go for a trick stab on him, and they do like a reverse trick stab on me. That's really annoying. Oh. The best part about medieval mode, it's like oh this pyro, what was he gonna do? It's like oh shit, it's a spy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Uh... You gotta admit, though, um, uh, your opinion on um, disguises, regardless, I think what some of the most exhilarating gameplay of Spy is when the enemy does believe your disguise, and you're like just in the middle of all of them, like, oh shit, oh shit, what? Do I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so fun. It's like, what do I do now? It's, it, like, you've got them believing you. It's like, what do I do? What do I do? It's so fun. I love it. You don't bump into anybody. No, I I agree with. Carlo to a lot on that because um, acting when because I I agree with Slurgy more that in my style disguises aren't really all that important I just choose something and I so you know uh, a sentry doesn't take me down and then I mean any good player is going to check whatever disguise you have anyway so I, I personally don't think they really matter but for those instances where you're like, okay, maybe I should choose something specifically. When the enemy team believes you, it is really, really exhilarating, especially when um, there's a good outcome after. Yeah. Maybe I'm just more mellow than you guys, but I never really get a super rush. It's all kind of relaxed when I'm playing super chill. Even in the middle, I'm just thinking, like, how long is this disguise going to last? You're boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Is> that... <laughs> Sometimes in, like, Highlander, like, on my actual uh, gold scrim um, Friday night, I disguise as a heavy and I I uh, take out the gloves. Never, you do a never take out your mini gun as heavy. It never works. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just laughs> I learned that the hard way. I mean, they believe it. Like they don't expect you to disguise as heavy, but heavy disguise is one of the best in competitive. I've used it so many times to take down the medic. That and soldier, I think. Are soldier, the best one. Like, soldier disguise is incredible. I've just been able to, uh, Gully, Gully Wash is my favorite map to use a solid disguise on because it's like, uh, we're, we're trying to push last point. All I have to do is disguise as a soldier and just back up through the balcony. And I'm instantly in the position where everyone thinks the solid should be. And it's just like, I work my way over the pipes. I spam, I spam the medic bind, get a buff. And then backstab the heavy. It's just amazing. <laughs> I feel yeah. like the disguise that never works is the spy disguise. Really? Oh no! I use it all the time. Think, oh, I'm so times. sneaky. I'm gonna the disguise as a spy. No one will expect. Everyone <laughs> expects it. It's not worth it. about the spy disguise is it can be anywhere on the map, and it's gonna make sense. Yeah. I think like 
I don't know, like the medic's probably the worst one, if, unless you're holding your medigun out in a pub. In comp, it's just like the worst one hands down most of the time. I've been, I've been able to make use of the medic disguise every now and again, because it, it, just because of the sheer fact that it's never used. Um, oh, yeah. It's like, if, if you know the medic's down, if you, if you can wait like three seconds at least, and then disguise as the medic, and then run up to your teammates from really far behind, uh, and you know, run up to the enemy from really far behind. Uh, it can work, uh, you know, if, if you just like spam the E key. Hmm. It's just I think it's the least useful overall. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that discovers this guy who's in. We're gonna start to wrap up soon, but uh, what are the best ways to improve a spy? What What do you guys do to work your way up to becoming what you guys are now? Um. I'll start this one mostly because you guys probably won't agree with me. Um, but I think the key, it goes back to how I started it with watch choices, that I think the Invis watch is the more authentic and pure spy. I mean, that it, you have the vanilla set that started off TF2 for a reason. I think using the Invis watch and put, just putting down the dead ringer and the spy sickle, in my opinion, if you're having trouble improving at spy and going to the Invis watch and the knife um, is really, really going to improve your spy play because, I mean, Slurgy and I are um, similar in that we think movement is very important, and I think Slurgy would agree with me that using the Invis watch more than the dead ringer to improve your spy at least is a better option. Uh, I agree that the Invis Watch definitely has a lot of factors that go into improving. I would say that you would want to learn how to use every watch. Don't just rely on the Dead Ringer. Uh, that's one of the things that really helped me is learning every single watch and all their different little uh, things in different play styles. And uh, yeah, that's what really helped me just learning all the weapons. I think the most important thing is just play. You have a lot of people that think, oh, there's just you know, a quick fast track, I, uh, fast track I can do. I can download this script, I'll become amazing. I can remove my view models, I'll become amazing. I can just use this one loadout. I just by playing, hard. yeah, just by playing, you can get better, just overall. I mean, as long as you're playing something at like, you know, a minimum skill level of like a Valve pub, you'll be alright. I mean, uh, impro improving as a spy, um... It, d it depends on what stage you are, you know, uh, along a spying. So if, if you're starting out spy, then um, just playing... You don't even have to play spy. Just by playing any of the classes, you can um, pick up what being a spy is about, uh, d you know, what the other classes' roles are, uh, things like that. Then you can focus on uh, stuff like, you know, as, the, as uh, Tobias said, your movement, um, getting, through the, uh, getting through the maps, experimenting with the unlocks and stuff like that. Uh, but for a competitive standpoint, uh, where, where me, where I am at least, um, I find that for me, uh, the most important thing that I improve on is uh, my aim. Uh, just in oh, any, uh, just in any pub or lobbies or whatever I'm doing, I'm always focusing on my aim because um, I, I just have this mindset of um, everything else is potentially uncertain except my aim. My aim is constant, and it will always be. It will always be a factor which stays constant throughout every single match. So if I can get my aim good, I will always have that to rely on. And, um, you know, pe pe some people have, like, an opinion of competitive, or just winning in general, that uh, in order to do it, you need to minimise the things that you can't control and uh, focus on the things that are in your control. And, um, you know, sometimes you'll be playing against uh, teams where... You'll be well, you'll be super shut down by really hardcore spy checking scouts, pyros, or heavies, or whatever. And just being able to have something that you can always rely on is, uh, in my opinion, incredibly helpful. So aim is definitely for, for me the number one thing that I focus on for spy improvement. Mm. The only I don't really play much TF2 beyond scrims now, but when I do play pubs, all I ever do is just run around on bad water with like various sniper friend uh, sniper main friends. And that's just all we do, we just kind of peer around with like, you know, ambi sniper rifle kind of thing. So yeah, I think just like improving is to find something you want to improve on and focus on it, rather than just kind of being up with the plane. Yeah, and one of the things Carlazzo said is playing all the classes. I think that's really important to understanding spies. You have to understand uh, where every other class is coming from, their point of view, what their, what their objectives are. That's important to determine determine uh, what you're going to what you're going to do as spy and lay out a, a plan. Mm, like I think playing pyro for a bit is pretty useful. 
I agree a lot with what you just said. And, and something I used to tell, uh, I used to get a lot of people asking me how, how to improve as a spy. And one of my suggestions was to play a different class, uh, which is what I did for quite a while. I just, I got to a plateau where I wasn't really improving. I wasn't really having fun with spy anymore. So I tried other classes for a while. And then when I went back to spy, I saw a spike in mm. my um, spy gameplay. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, there, there was a, when I, when I was first getting into competitive, um, you know, I, I was, I was uh, you know, really gung-ho spy. I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm a spy main, like, you know, playing nothing but spy. Uh, but then I, t I took a season off to go play medic. And um, after play and playing medic, uh, my knowledge from playing spy really transferred so that um, I, I would know when to predict spy is coming for me. And, you know, it translates to every class, not just spy, um, for improving uh, for other classes. But uh, just playing med helped me understand uh, when spies were going to come for me. And then after having played med, uh, going back to spy, I could understand uh, where I could find the medic more often uh, at times, and what uh, he he what he would often be healing when he'd be spy checking, and the best times to attack him. So, yeah, just playing other classes really can improve your spy. And another thing is uh, looking at your old demos and analyzing them and realizing the mistakes you made, and be like, oh, okay, next time I'm in that situation, I won't make that same mistake again. It's just really good to analyze your own play. Speaking of uh, analyzing demos for like past play and stuff, what what do you, what do you guys think on the subject of like? Uh, mentors because i know that's a lot of things that uh really young spies and uh you know we mean spies who are looking to get into that top echelon they, they really uh look, look for a mentor you know what do you think of stuff like that i think videos these days are replacements for mentors you i would say that you're you would get a better education from you know one-on-one -on -one, of course but there's videos that can educate thousands of people just from uploading a single video a tutorial and i think Everybody should search videos, tutorials. That's uh, actually when I first started. I didn't know how to use the DR at all. I searched YouTube for a tutorial on the DR, and it drastically improved. I understood it from the video, and uh, that's definitely something that you should be doing is looking at other spies, their play styles, looking at videos. You don't necessarily need one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but if you can get it, then that's definitely going to help. I mean, I've been asked for uh, to help mentor some uh, when i was getting into this but i had a mentor um but i i personally um no offense to him but um I, I didn't really get that much out of it and i don't think it was because he was necessarily saying the wrong things but um aside from like some of the basics uh things that you need to know a spy i think a lot of it just comes down to how you want to play it so i think self analyzation is um much more better than uh, one on one on one mentoring because the men the mentor is basing in, uh, any of any of his critique outside of uh, obvious mistakes um based on how he likes to play really um and and really little micro decisions which um you, you know you sort of made in the heat of the moment as spy because you know it's such a risky class um, so I don't know, I, I think um, what Sergi said about like videos, I, I prefer uh, taking the ideas that people uh, put across in like tutorials and videos and uh, just thinking about it uh, the next time you play is more effective than, um, you know, having a mentor. I mean, I certainly agree that, you know, watching a video, it gives you a lot of time to reflect on what has been said in the video. It gives you time to decide if that's what you really want to agree with if you really want to practice that and spy especially is a class that you do a lot of self-reflection on you do a lot of thinking you you uh go into psychology and other stuff it's not really a class where somebody just tells you oh you do this you do this uh, you're doing this wrong i mean it's something you have to think about for yourself a lot of the time and determine what the best course of action is for your place though yeah psychologically psychological um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a good deal we've got on improvement. Uh, what do you guys reckon are some of the best spy maps? Badwater. Orange X3. 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 Swiftwater. Actually, you know what? All the open maps. I take that back. <laughs> Mountain Lab. Have you guys ever played CP Mountain Lab? I yeah. like Mountain Lab. That is a really, real spy map, actually. Uh, I actually I learned stair stabs on CP Egypt, because the amount of stairs on that map is crazy. But um, Mountain Lab is just, it's so open for passing like Ambi, 
and uh, the amount of hills and corners and all these corridors you can go through, just great for learning trick stabs. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and be the odd man out here. Uh, I hate bad water. I, I absolutely hate oh, it. You're off the team. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get the competitive here. has ruined bad water for me. I'm sorry. Third point can suck my dick. Third <laughs> point really pisses me off. Tell me what you really think. Last, last point. Last point's okay. Second point I hate. Third point I hate. First point's okay. But um, I think for, for pubs, I absolutely love Thunder Mountain. Thunder Mountain's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. Uh... And I really, uh, it's not tailored to, um, it's not tailored to Spy, but I love Steel and Gravel Pit just for the, uh, just, be just because of how team focused it is, um, and how important it is for you to be doing your role correctly on those maps. So I can really appreciate those maps for spying, uh, even though they're not necessarily maps where the spy shines on. Steel's really good just because it's quite flat, and if you're playing it with a friend, you could learn how to be a flank spy. If you're gonna be doing a little bit of comp, like if you go into there with like a scout or a pyro friend, you can just kind of work out. You can like practice how to play with other people, uh, especially in stuff like steel and gravel pit. It's really, quite nice with a friend. I really love warm front just because of an open map and has really high elevation. Like especially made, you can get on top of the uh, the house and just drop down. That's it's always a, been my favorite map. It's just a reskin of cold front, but it's better. Yeah. Snow Same eats man. FPS. <laughs> All right, so um, Woolen Sleewit has to peace out mm -hmm. soon, but um, uh, before he pieces out, anything, any other maps that you guys think would be good to play to help improve spy? Um, one of my all-time favorites actually is uh, Barn Blitz, and I recently just played the most updated version. I think it's B five. Yeah, yeah, I played Barn Blitz. Couple different last yeah, yeah, it's it's really nice, and e even the the Valve version of Barn Blitz I think is really nice. There are a lot of um, props that you can use to your advantage, and weird little places you can uh, get up t into to hide and um, really freak out the enemy. That's one of my favorites. If you if you know the ammo pack locations on um, on just uh, any map you play, then uh, you you do all right as long as it's not um, Gold Rush or Dust Bowl, then you're fucked. I played like 4,000 hours of Dust Bowl before I played the Pond. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so yeah. Alright then, I'm uh, going to need to head off. Later, right. I'll see you later. Thank you, see you next week, tuning in. Okay, Love you. goodbye. <laughs> now I'm your bye -bye. EU representative. God help me. Now, for the last few subjects, we have to cover um, one big uh, factor in competitive, uh, or just pubs in general. Um, the best way to coordinate is sentry push. Like, uh, if the sentry is locking down your team and everyone's relying on you to take up the sentry, what's the easiest way that uh, your team can help you coordinate sentry push? Mm. Good. Good. Uh, red tape uh, recorder. recorder. Back... <laughs> red tape recorder, screw you. Um, <laughs> back when I played competitive a lot more, um, I learned um, a lot from another great spy whom I'm not sure plays anymore. His name was Ixer. Um, his big style was Cloak and Dagger in competitive. He used it really, really well for um, communication. And I, I found um, a lot when there's a sentry that's just locking your team down and you as a spy with whatever loadout just you know, can't time it right with your team and can't do anything really effective that the Cloak and Dagger is a great way to just hang out, um, time a pick that will benefit your team and get the sentry down, and just give all sorts of comms that will help you push. Mm. I mean, yeah, um, I sick. definitely agree with that. That uh, the cloak and dagger is the ultimate way to just you can sit there and coordinate it perfectly. Uh, that's definitely uh, what you would use it for. Is mm. coordinate something like that. I mean, um. I don't run the cloak and dagger that much, um, but I'll be the first to say um, that. Well, no, first, but I mean, I, I, will, I will definitely uh, go out of my way to say that communication is one of the most important things, and the sentry push is just a prime example of um, why it's needed. And um, I don't uh, run the cloak and dagger for most sentry saps because um, 
most of the time I'm sorting something out with my t- with my team to like tie a sap or something, and it's basically um, you know it's like a timestamp. It's like we're going for the attack on this century at thirty seconds in or whatever. You're either there or you're not. And um, I, I make it a point to be there all the time because I like to be quick. I, I almost always run invis just so I can get to it as quick as possible. Um, but you just need an open line of communication with like your demo as he's being ubered in or jumping or with your solly or something like that. So you just time it so that you sap at the exact same time that a rocket or a stick or a pill is going to hit it. And if you can time that, then um, the sentry will go down. Um, you know, bad water first is probably the uh, the best example for it. I think you know yeah. for the for the sentry if it's uh, in in the top left by the top of the cliff. Um, m- most lives I just uh, cloak underneath the stairs. I say to my team, I'm ready. Uh, I just say uh, sapping in three, and they've already started their jump and they're uh, right by already spamming the sentry just as the sapper goes on it. So you ne- yeah, you need to just talk a lot. Yeah, I think the best way to coordinate the sentry forces is all based off momentum of your team. So um, if your team's pushing, or this goes for just big plays in general, uh, how make how spies make good plays, is if your team is either pushing into them and the other team's distracted, that, that should be the easiest way for you to get a sap. Um, if the other team's just meandering around while your team's building whatever, and they're constantly looking around, it's going to be hard to get a sentry sap and live. So. The best way to go, or the best time to go in for sentry zaps would definitely be when your team's pushing in uh, and everyone's distracted and focused on fighting each other. Mm. And, um, and do you guys prioritize other classes over other classes, or? Of course. Uh, in general, or in a sentry push? Depends in general, that. in general. In general, uh, I'd mm. say, you know, every class has their own um, time where they're more important. And, uh, you know, it obviously differs on maps and all. But uh, for me personally, I, f- I find that the outlying class that I want to kill almost always on all maps was, is the sniper. Um, I, I, any time that a sniper pick is available to me, I'll probably go for that. Because I, I, I tend to trust in my team's ability to... Um, be able to manage uber fights, um, you know, to, to the point where I don't feel like I, I necessarily have to go for that really risky med pick or demo pick or whatever. Whereas a sniper can just ruin the uber push entirely by just like killing the pocket or the medic just as I go in. So I think the sniper is, uh, he's almost always at the top of my list of people that need to die. I think with me, it's always going for the heavy damage classes. Um, Especially with uh, Dead Ringer, where it doesn't let you um, get in, like, well, with me, I run Dead Ringer religiously. But, um, uh, it's going for, like, the damage classes to definitely help your team uh, defend and attack. But, uh, that's just how I play. I mean, I think it certainly depends on whether you can, whether you're sure you can get the picks, too. Yeah. If you can't get the pick, on the priority target, then you just take whatever you can get. But, uh, and in since I play pubs, it's different. Like in pubs, the priority is usually almost the always. Yeah, it's usually almost always the teleporter. Mm. Uh, you want to take that out first, and then maybe go for the medics. Uh, Unfortunately, um, for, for competitive at least, I have a, uh, I don't know why, but I just have an innate, terrible timing for, for teleporters to the point where I'm just like, Fuck it, forget it. Because any time I decide to go for the teleporters, the enemy team push in and they win. <laughs> just like for oh, yeah, sake. that happens every time. And, and then so you I think like, oh, it's too late. Yeah. Uh, teleporters make a whole lot of difference in the game, I think. Um, bringing the enemy up to the front line, yeah, like, I shut that, those right? down and slow down their momentum so much. Most of the time in a pub, I'll be you know back at the teleporters, making sure they're down every single second. It's definitely the number one target. Yeah, mm-hmm. for, for pubs, I agree with that. The teleporters are insanely important. Which yeah. is uh, something that spies need to start doing. I hate when we have spies on our team, but they're not taking out the teleporters. It's like, no, you they want be those doing that. sick med drops, man. Like, I know. The, the electricity that comes off the bottom. We live for that, man. Uh, <sighs> gotta get that afterwards, man. Especially spies that ignore mini sentries as well. Um, That's, yeah. 
That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Competitive <laughs> when you're playing like a lakeside or a viaduct match, and it's like uh, your scout is just like crying to the team, these minis are destroying me. And you're just like, I don't care. <laughs> because you've got a disguise, like they don't do anything. It's like, get the soldier to deal with it. God, I don't care. Get good, scrub. Uh, but yeah. That's uh, how it right. focuses, at least for me. Well, um, I think that wraps it up. Uh, it's been about an hour or so, but um, thank you, Carlos, so JC, Slurgy, and Tobias for uh, coming in to talk about uh, all these factors of Spy. It's definitely going to help with uh, Spies learning to improve their gameplay. Pleasure meeting yeah. you, gents. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, enjoy being here. All right, well... Uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Wait, wait, wait. And... Should we all do just like a massive self plug at the end here? So <laughs> plug our YouTube channels. That's yeah, a good idea. I'll link everyone's YouTube channel. Alrighty. Um, yeah. Mind it now. Alrighty. Okay. That was.